Psalms chapter 42. You can remain standing while uh, we read this passage and we'll have you sit afterward. And uh, appreciate you coming, appreciate those watching online. Hope I can meet all of you in person someday. We met uh, one this, uh, this week that uh, we've never met that's been watching online. And, uh, and uh, so appreciate all of that. I'm going to talk about depression today. I'm, I'm, I'm preaching either two or three messages. <clears throat> it's called Lesson on Depression. And uh, this is number one, which is Practical Truths on Depression. And I'm going to start on uh, chapter 42. And, uh, and verse 1, As the heart panteth after the water brook, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsteth for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before him? My tears have been my meat day and night. Uh, that means I've been, I haven't been eating, I've just been crying. Um, but while they continually say unto me, Where is thy God? When I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me, for I had gone with this multitude. I went with them to the house of God, with uh, the voice of joy and praise, with the multitude that kept holy day. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet, uh, for I shall yet praise Him, for the help of His uh, countenance. O my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore, I remember thee from the land of Jordan and uh, of the Hermonites and from uh, the hill of Mizar. Deep calleth in the deep at the uh, noise of thy water spouts and all thy waves and all thy billows are gone um, over me. Let's go ahead and pray and we'll talk about uh, some practical truths about depression. Lord, thank you. For the word of God, thank you. It gives us answers. We can be thoroughly furnished unto every good work. Lord, so many people don't know the Bible. They don't understand that it has the answers for life. And we thank you for it, Lord. I pray today that you'd open the word to us. You'd speak to our hearts. You'd help those who struggle with this, who are struggling, who have struggled, or who will struggle with wisdom. I pray for those who maybe <clears throat> this is not their battle. They would get some wisdom to help somebody else. And uh, you would just uh, dwell among us and speak to us. And uh, I pray today that you would uh, lift the darkness uh, for some for a while, that they would uh, be able to uh, hear and uh, have hope and see your truth. I pray you'd give me every word to say and speak to hearts. We ask for your help in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. Uh, depression is real. Um, it is in the Bible. Um, we see it in verse 3. We, uh, My tears have been my uh, meat day and night, while they continually say unto me, where is thy God? Um, when you're depressed, oftentimes people uh, pile on and uh, say the wrong things, some of them to hurt you, which was his case. Um, this is probably David here. It doesn't title it, but it's, it's in a section where David wrote it, and uh, there's some things in it that make it look like David. And, uh, and uh, in this passage, he's talking about, you know, I've went to the house of God and, and everybody saw me and all the joy and celebration I had. And I was a person who was very up, but now I'm down. And, and they say to me, Where's your, where is your God now that you're all celebrating and uh, pouring that on him? And, uh, <clears throat> and we see uh, the depression here. Verse 5, why art thou cast down, O my soul? That's depression. And he's asking, Why? Why am I so depressed? Um, and why art thou disquieted within me? Why is my soul just down, depressed, can't do, any, do anything? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the uh, help of his countenance. So you see um, depression here multiple times. It's more times. We'll read more times where it says it just in this little passage and other places in the Bible. Um, but... Uh, uh, oh, uh, verse, let's look at verse 6. Oh my God, my soul is cast down within me. Mm-hmm. These are all phrases. There's a lot of Bible phrases for depression. Cast down, disquieted. Uh, it talks uh, about uh, heaviness. Um, there's a lot of Bible phrases. Darkness. There's a lot of Bible phrases for depression as you, as you look through them. And we'll get into them another week. That's not what we're dealing with this week. Uh, but depression is real. Um, it is in the Bible. The Bible talks about it and has a good deal to say about it because God knew we would deal with depression. I know some of you and your stories of depression uh, that are here. We've had unbelievable success um, with depression. Um, if we were a charging place, 
uh, we would uh, be very wealthy in that because uh, the psychiatrists and psychologists charge a great deal to try to get you out of there and don't have a lot of success with it outside of uh, medication, you out of emotions. Um, but we've had unbelievable success. Um, a lot of success <clears throat> I didn't know about. Um, we just we just do what we do. And a lot of people have come to me afterward and said, Pastor, you know, can you believe it? I'm off all my medications. I don't have depression anymore. And I'm like, I didn't know you were on medications, and I'm glad. And uh, uh, I don't ever recommend. We've had a lot of people stop taking the medication, just said, I don't need it anymore. I don't recommend they do that. I say, look, you need to talk to your doctor before you do that. You can throw yourself for a big loop doing that, okay? That's very powerful stuff, and uh, I'm, for, I'm, for, you know, I'm fine with you getting off it, but you better do it the right way. But we had a ton of people just stop. Yes, amen. They just stopped, and God just protected them, and they said, I, I'm fine. And they were fine, and they're still long-term fine, and we've had unbelievable um, success with that. Um, by God's grace, even though it's not something, a lot of them, some of them got personal counseling, some of them just getting to know God and in his presence, his fullness of joy, and God sort of changing things and fixing the way they're thinking and things, and, and God just helped them. And, uh, and, uh, but it's real, and it's powerful, and uh, it can be uh, debilitating, and it's very powerful. There are two levels we're going to get into uh, in de- when we're dealing with the depression on that, and uh, <clears throat> And the first level is just the causes of depression in the spiritual side. And today, we're going to go, actually, we're going to go on the practical side, um, practical helps for depression. And uh, there, there are a lot of things to get into that we won't get into all those. So don't think you listen to one message, you understood all the things. There are chemical things going on in your brain that affect things. We understand that. And uh, I am not against some people for a period of time sometimes who have physical brain problems. Um, you know, getting something to help them for a while and, and, and see if they can uh, 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 get that to stabilize them so they can think clearly enough to get fixed. We, uh, we, we, we've seen that. Um, but uh, there are causes for it. There's multiple reasons, and, and we'll get into that a little bit another week. But, uh, uh, but you know, I just want to give you some practical things um, from the Bible and from life and from, from a lot of success and a lot of victory in and, and my own life. People who know me... <clears throat> Uh, never are always very shocked to realize um, I dealt pretty severely with depression because I am a up person all the time, um, always. And the way you see me right now is the way you'd see, you would see me five years ago and ten years ago and two weeks ago, and I'm, I, I am very stable emotionally and uh, don't deal with depression on a regular basis at all. Um, I love life, and, uh, and, uh, but I had uh, two years of severe depression, um, and I had, uh, I don't know, probably a year uh, when I was younger um, of depression, a year when I was younger, I was not saved, uh, but a couple years while I was in Bible college uh, of depression that was pretty severe and pretty intense, and, uh, and uh, I was right with God, I was doing what I was supposed to be doing, um, because it's part of, it's part of the uh, spectrum of humanity, okay? Um, it's, it's part of the, you look at the landscape, you got mountains, you got valleys, if you if you all you had was mountains, you wouldn't have any valleys, okay. And uh, and uh, the part of humanity is an emotional spectrum, okay. And you have those things, but they they're not supposed to control you, and they're not supposed to ruin your life, and not supposed to make you uh, uh, destroy you. And they don't have to; they will, but uh, without without wisdom and without God and without some help. But uh, I want to give you some practical helps for depression. I'm just going to go into them and uh, start in this passage here, and so we'll go to several others. Uh, you can just listen along in dealing with depression. Number one, realize that depression does not always make sense. <laughs> depression does not always make sense. So those of you who've never had depression, um, understand people going through depression, it, there is not always a logical reason for it. Okay, people have often asked me, how, how do you deal with depression? How do you have success? What do you tell somebody who's depressed? And I can't answer that question in a thing like that. But the first question uh, when, when someone asks me that is, a pastor or somebody else, how do you deal with someone with depression? I say, first of all, I have to decide, does their depression make sense? Because some depression does and some doesn't. You have a loved one die and you're depressed. Okay. Makes sense. You get in a serious car wreck, your health is all messed up, and all of a sudden you lose your job because you can't work, and your finances are bad, and your house gets repossessed, and you're depressed. Okay, 
um, we, we know why you're depressed. There's a reason for it. But there's a decent amount of depression that has no logical sense to it. Your life can be perfectly good. Everything can be blessed. You could be doing just fine. Everybody looking at you would say, man, you are incredible. You got everything together. You're doing great. But you're actually dealing with depression, and you don't even know why. And, and, uh, and, and, and so those two roads decide how it's dealt with. But sometimes depression doesn't make sense. And we see that in this passage, it's a not make sense depression. Okay? He doesn't understand. Verse 5, why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God. You're going to praise him in the future. Verse, uh, verse 11, it says this, Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him who is the health of my countenance and my God. Chapter 43, uh, verse 5, Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him who is the health of thy countenance. Uh, and my God, <clears throat> if you think that you will never be depressed if you have good circumstances, you're, 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 it's not that simple. That's right. Okay. Sometimes you can have everything be okay. Uh, just to, to illustrate this really simply is I have a list here of the most depressed and the least depressed countries in the world. Okay. Um, Americans have the easiest life. We're the wealthiest country in the history of earth. We're not the wealthiest country in the world. We're the wealthiest country in the history of the earth. Okay? We are so safe. Um, you have gigantic oceans on each side of us. We're not worried about being attacked. We're not the Ukraine. Okay? We have uh, clean water. We have a clean environment. Uh, uh, if you don't believe that, please travel the world with me. Um, and uh, we, have, uh, uh, we have incredible beauty around us. We have an unbelievable diversity. We've got swamp lands with alligators, and we've got high mountains you can ski down. We have deserts. We have everything in America. We have more food that we can eat. Our poor have an obesity problem. Amen. Okay. It's amazing this country is. We have amazing freedoms. I know if you watch the news, everybody complains about America is horrible. They have no idea of history. They have no idea of the world. They have no idea how amazing America is. It's an ama our, uh, the medical care, the, the, the rich billionaire sheiks from Saudi Arabia come to America to come and get our health care. It's amazing what we have in America. The comforts, the air conditioning, the electrical grid we have, it's wonderful. Okay? If you don't know that, Please quit watching the complainers and open up your eyes and look around you. It's amazing. Uh, and, and, and which it's leading news that one product is not in a store right now. Okay, leading news. Remember when there was no toilet papers in the store? Remember the big deal about the no toilet paper? <laughs> Can I tell you? I go to the third world a lot. There's no toilet paper anywhere there. And, and i just tell you, you don't want to know, okay? You don't want to know. Just, just, just trust me. And if you ever go with me, let me give you some advice before you go out. Um, because we're so blessed. We're so blessed. But so where is America on that? Let's say we're discontent people. Let's say with all of our wealth, with all of our comforts, with all of our, our, our you know, hot water and all the stuff that's amazing... Okay, and, and and you're not taking a bucket bath. You know how many bucket baths I've taken around the world? I've taken so many bucket baths. A bucket bath is you grab a bucket and you put it in the river or you put it in something or you've got one little faucet and you pour it there and, and then it's your bath. And uh, that's what you do. And that's also the toilet. And inside of that shower stall, in those cases, is a hole in the ground. That's a toilet. And you flush it with the water for your bucket, and you stand in there and take a shower. It's all the same little room with one little hole in the floor. And that's, that's life. And I've lived there and stayed there a million times. And I know, uh, I, uh, I know you complain about the, bath, the gas station bathroom, okay? I know. Uh, we're Americans. We're spoiled, okay? And, uh, but... But you would think Americans, man, let's say we're really discontent. Maybe we're number, we should be number one if circumstances and comfort and having things and security. And by the way, it's very difficult to starve to death in America. Okay. 
Um, the, 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 uh, I know a lot of people with food stamps who at the end of the month go out and buy a bunch of people's stuff because they can't spend it all, okay? It's very hard to starve to death in America. Uh, the people on the corners usually aren't starving, okay? Um, and, and, and things, and, and, and understand, with all that, you think maybe we're discontent, maybe we're number five. Maybe, maybe if we're really grumpy people, we're number 10 on the depression level. You know, I'm, I'm the 10th from the bottom, I mean. You know, we should be number one, the happiest people, okay? You know, we should be that. America is the second most depressed country on earth. Ukraine is number one. America is the second most depressed. What area of America is the most depressed? It's got to be some poor area in the middle of Mississippi. It's got to be the Indian reservations, one of the poor areas. It's got to be somewhere where there's, no, where, there's, where there's really just bad conditions, maybe where the weather is horrible. North Dakota It is somewhere where there's just horrible scenery, uh, where there's nothing to look at. It's just a bunch of dry, dead fields, the badlands maybe. Uh, could it be somewhere uh, where there's just uh, really horribly high crime or something? No, the worst, most depressed area in America is Seattle. <laughs> number one, number one place in the world for depression is Seattle. Amen. We have mountains. Yep. We have a beautiful ocean. Yep. We have mild weather. Yep. We have, it doesn't matter, any direction you look, you're going to see something pretty. In an hour and a half, I could be skiing or at the ocean. It's an unbelievable area. And wealth. 20% of Seattle makes over $330,000 a year. And it's the number one place of depression on earth. So it isn't all circumstance that brings depression. You know, you know and there's two, about 200 countries... You know, if America is number two, by the way, um, <clears throat> how about number what you, number four, Australia? <laughs> okay, first world, nice, good conditions. Number seven, Portugal. Number nine, Finland. Okay, it doesn't make sense. Do you know the tenth from the bottom is Philippines? <laughs> I was just in the Philippines a month ago. The conditions are horrible. Pollution's horrible. The, the, the sickness, the disease, malaria, uh, lockdowns, every, it, it, it's a mess. They're, 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 they're number 10 happiest. The countries I'm going to name, I'll name you the happiest countries in the world, you're going to say, I, I guarantee you, 95% of you can't find them on a map, okay, and, 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 and where they are. The least depressed country in the world, Solomon Islands. Number two, Papua New Guinea, completely third world and primitive. The, could be the most primitive country in the world. Not the poorest. Poorest is usually Somalia, Haiti, some, one, of those, one of those Chad, one, somewhere in there. But... Uh, but uh, uh, it is very primitive, Papua New Guinea. Uh, Timor uh, Lesta, Lesti is number three. Vanuatu, number four. He's the least depressed. Kim uh, Kerbali, and I am excellent at geography. I have no idea where that is. Um, Tonga, Samoa. Samoans are always happy, aren't they? They're the, some of the least depressed. That's because they, they're food. They, they, they cook all the time. You know why they're happy? Because the women are happy because the men do all the cooking. And, that, and, when, and the women are happy because the men do the cooking. And when the women are happy, the men are happy. Just something like about that. <clears throat> That's right. And number eight, Laos. Number nine, Nepal. That is a backward, harsh condition country. Philippines, number 10. It doesn't, it doesn't, it's not circumstances that cause depression. There are, there are multimillionaires who hang themselves in their mansions in Hollywood. Yeah. Okay. It's, uh, it's, it's not always, it doesn't always make sense. Sometimes it's circumstantial. With Job, it was circumstantial. 
Lost his whole family, lost all his wealth, lost his everything all in one day. His wife attacked him. He, he was depressed because of his circumstances. And there was a spiritual aspect to it, and we'll get that next week. But, but that was circumstantial. We can understand Job being depressed. But we can't understand Elijah in 1 King 19. <clears throat> he just had a national revival, the thing he'd always wanted. And he wanted to die. Sometimes it's only emotional, spiritual, and sometimes it's circumstantial. And so just realize depression does not always make sense. Sometimes it's weather. There's a million things that can affect your emotions. A million things. You can go into depression because your team, you're too into sports and your team lost. The Super Bowl where the Seahawks should have handed on to, off to uh, Marshawn Lynch at the end, people were down. You ever seen someone from Central America after their soccer team is kicked out of the World Cup? You have to hide the sharp objects. I mean, it's bad. Because that's circumstance affects people. And it can be things in life that affect them. And it can be things that are big and things that are small. Sometimes a little thing sets you off and it reminds you of all your failures, but it was just a little thing. But it just starts an avalanche of thinking and negativity. And then all of a sudden you're depressed because you got a red light. And you got angry about that. And then you got impatient about time. And you think about all your time you wasted. And then you start thinking about how you're bad at time. And then all the things you forgot to do. And then you're a failure. And because it doesn't always make sense. Right. Number two, realize depression is not sin. I'm going to get in Matthew 26. This is uh, one of the things we... Uh, <clears throat> We help people with uh, and help them through that. It's just understand depression is not sin. What you do with it can be sin or not sin, but depression itself isn't sin. It's an emotion. It's a feel. It's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's what you go through. And uh, so Matthew 26, this is Jesus talking, and the Bible says, he who knew no sin. And he says, in all points tempted like, yet, like we are yet without sin. Jesus never sinned. He was God. But here he goes into depression in verse 36. Then cometh Jesus uh, with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. And he said unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful even unto death. Tear ye here and watch with me. And, and uh, he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it be possible, let this uh, cup pass from me. Uh, nevertheless, <clears throat> not what I will, but as thou will. Jesus says he was very sorrowful. Then he said it's uh, a very heavy. And then he said, My soul is sorrowful unto death. Those are all depression. Remember, depression is not sadness. Right. It's much deeper. It's much heavier. It's longer, usually. And, uh, and uh, it starts affecting everything. And, uh, and so his, uh, he, he, Jesus was very sorrowful and depressed. Why? Because he knew he was about to go to the cross to die for the sins of the world. Now, he came to do that, but he knew he was going to be separated from the Father. And he knew that for the first time, him and the Father wouldn't be close because the separation of sin that it brings for us he was suffering for us for that for us. And that's why he said, "My God, my God, why has thou forsaken me?" It wasn't the physical pain that got him on the cross. It was the separation of God the Father because our sin was on him, and God couldn't behold the sin and and turned his back on him, and and the world became dark. And he knew that was coming. He knew the Bible, and and his he was depressed knowing what was coming. And uh, however, he didn't sin. It was just part of knowing what was going to happen. Just understand, if you are in depression or have been in depression, you're in good company. Moses went into depression. Elijah went into depression. David went into depression. Paul, Jesus. It's how you respond when it comes that will this be the right or wrong decision. Okay? I went into depression and handled it properly by God's grace, thankfully, and made it through much stronger. 
and, uh, and, uh, and, and didn't choose to stop serving God, didn't choose to make any bad decisions, and kept on serving the Lord when it didn't look like there was any hope and other things. And uh, that really uh, was a huge part of making me uh, what I needed to be and to make it so I could be uh, stable and strong to help a lot of other people that I needed to have. But I had to go through that. But how do you do that? Depression is something you might visit, but it's not where you're supposed to live. I might have something tragic happen today, and it might dep- make me depressed. It might throw me into depression, but it's okay to go in depression, just like it's okay to be underwater, but you can't live there. You need to get out of it eventually. And... and the devil, and there is a spiritual side of it that we'll get into more next week, wants you to live there and lose all hope. But you will stay there if you don't do the right things when you get there. Because it can be crippling. And you've got to make, take the right steps when you get there. Because your circumstances aren't always going to change. The circumstances that brought you to depression, if that's what brought you there, they may change and you may come out of it because it's a circumstantial depression, but uh, circumstances might be bad. We have sent children into depression with COVID foolishly, okay, and it's going to be very difficult because they don't have the strength nor the wisdom how to get out of it. And, 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 and uh, uh, it's, it's, it's bad. It's going, to be, it's going to be very precarious getting those kids out of that depression. And, uh, and, and because they don't always have the wisdom. And, and they might think that's life. And once you think it's life, uh, let me tell you, that's not life. But when you're depressed, you think it's going to be. Mm-hmm. And if you don't have the wisdom to get out of it and don't get, or don't get the help to get out of it, it does become permanent. And you don't want it to become permanent. It's something you visit. It's like the dump. You go there for a minute, and there's a purpose in it, but you don't want to live there. Okay? Because It stinks. Okay, and, uh, <clears throat> and so um, realize it's not sin. How you respond is going to be a lot. Will you be able to rejoice when you're depressed or give thanks? You say that doesn't make any sense, you're depressed. You still can, and we'll, get, we'll talk about that a little bit. But you can rejoice and give thanks and be a thankful person while you're depressed. That's right. yes, you, can. you can still do that. Okay, you can find the things that are good even though you don't feel it and give thanks anyway and rejoice in them. But you got to stick your head above the cloud for a minute and get some air to do that. And, and, and you've got to do some choices. We'll get that at the end. Number three, realize that the battle is over hope. Hope is the key word. Hope is what you're going to need. And hope is everything. Let's go back to our, our verses there in Psalms. Realize that the battle is going to be about this thing called hope. When you're depressed, you lose hope. And when you lose hope, you're in real bad trouble. Because if you go into it <clears throat> and say, my team lost, but there's always next season, then okay. You're going to be down for a few days and come out of it. That's not what we're talking about. Because you have hope. Okay? But if you do not have hope and you think, I am going to, never going to be happy, I'll never come out of this, I can't be fixed, that is where you are in real danger. And there will be a battle, a spiritual battle between God and the devil. God is a God of all hope, the Bible says. That's right. And the devil is the hope stealer. And there's going to be a war, and you will have to decide which one you're going to end up following. And are you going to go and get hope again? Because you have to have hope. You can have hope in depression. Okay? Amen. You can have hope in depression. And that hope will pull you through while you're going through the depression. But when you're in depression and the hope goes out, all the lights get turned off. And now you're just in darkness. And, and as long as there's a light there at the end of the tunnel, you can say, okay, I'm in there, but there's a, there's a way out. There's light over there. But when the hope goes away, there's no light. And you just say, I'm just going to wander around this dark room forever. And, and, and that's not a, a fun place to be. I've been there. It's not fun. Psalm 42 <clears throat> The psalmist here is going to be okay, because watch what he says. Verse, uh, verse 5, he's in his depression, he says, uh, Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why art thou disquieted within me? 
Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. Notice that. He knows in the future he's going to praise God again. So he doesn't know why he's depressed. He's very depressed. He's down. People are kicking him while he's down. But he says, hey, soul, what's wrong with you? And, and notice that. It's a fascinating thing there a little bit. Is he kind of talks to himself. And instead of being buried, he kind of looks down into the, the cave that he's in and says, hey, you, what are you doing? Hope in God. You're going to praise him again. And, 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 and you got to have some so bright in your mind where you can honestly assess and look, and you've got to take, make the effort to say, wait a minute, let's really look at this thing. Where are you? What's going on? Why are, why are we in this? Instead of just feeling. And we are a society that's just been led by every social media, every entertainment system, Everything is all about feeling. That's right. But feeling, being led by feeling, is not biblical. No, it's not. He that trusteth in his heart is a fool. Right. Your emotions can ruin you, can make you take your own life. You've got to be sober enough to say, you know what? You're a little too upset about this. Calm down. Amen. You're making too big a deal about this. Amen. Hey, I know you want to say that. Don't say it. You got to be able to say, you know, I know you're down. I know you're having a hard time. I know that person over affected you, what they said to you, but your life's pretty good. That's right. You got to be able to do that. That's sobriety in the Bible. It's under control. Okay. And you got to be able to do that. Not just, oh, I just feel. You're going you're gonna to learn biblically to minimize feelings. Right. They're not the controlling factor. Okay, they are, are, are a, a part of the, uh, they are part of the formula. They're the onions in the stew. But it's not onion stew. Because it's too strong and shouldn't lead your life. That's pretty good, wasn't it? Yeah. Onion stew. Like that down there. And uh, every once in a while, something good comes out. <clears throat> Verse 11. Went to say, why art thou cast down on my soul? Why art thou as quiet within me? Hope thou in God. For I shall yet praise him. I'm going to praise him again. That's, again, 43.5 says the same thing. Will you ever get better is the question. And the psalmist says, you're going to. You're going to get praise, God. You're going to go back up to those holy days. You're going to have a good time. You will quit trying if you do not th you think you will ever get better. Let's go to Psalm 27. Psalm 27 and verse 13. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Amen. If I didn't think I'd ever see God bless me again, I'd ever see good things again in my life, I would have just quit. And if the devil can make you think God's never going to bless you, nothing good is going to happen, you're never going to get this fixed, you're never going to have happiness again, you're never going to have joy again, you're never going to uh, uh, feel better, then you're going to faint, you're going to quit, you're going to lose your will to try because you don't think you can. You lose hope if you think you're, uh, you'll never get better. You also lose hope if you think, and it's very important, that your effort does not matter. Let me take you to Psalm 73. This is another man who struggled with depression, and this is Asaph. He was a song leader for the nation of Israel. And, uh, and uh, he was done because he thought, I'm wasting my time. It doesn't matter if I do the right thing. Psalm 73, verse 2 says, But as for me, my feet were almost gone, and my steps had uh, well nigh slipped. For I was envious of the foolish <clears throat> when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. He was done. He saw wicked people doing well, and he says, why am I bothering? Verse thir uh, 13, verily I have cleansed my heart in vain and washed my hands in innocency. I, I've done all this hard work spiritually. They didn't even matter. The wicked people are prospering, and I'm struggling right now. It's a waste of time. For all the day, verse 14, for all day long have I been plagued and chastened every morning. If I say, uh, I will speak thus, behold, I should offend against a generation 
of thy children. When I thought to know this, it was too painful for me. I've just wasted my time with all this effort because it's never going to get better, and I'm just going to be beat up all day long, messed up, struggling all day long. I was about gone when I, when I was in that situation because you thought, why try? And when you think that trying is not going to make any difference, you lose hope and you say, I, and again, this thing's about hope. You lose hope and say, why should I bother? It's not going to matter. And this battle is over hope. I want to say this, for the believer, there is always hope. I'll just read to you, and then I'll give you a little testimony. It's Revelation chapter 20. There's always hope, even if this life doesn't get better. There's still hope. Revelation 21 and verse 4. This is when heaven, when we're in heaven. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, Neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. There will never be another tear, never a death, never a sorrow, never a disappointment, never an unfair person uh, treated unfairly, never another um, nasty person. Someday, all of us who are saved, who have Christ, we, we have hope no matter what, even if this whole rest of our life stays miserable. God. We always have that hope. That does not mean we don't want to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. But I'm going to say there is always hope. You can have hope in depression. He had that in Psalm 43. Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him. In the middle of his depression, he had hope. I have several other examples of that in the Bible. I'll get to those maybe. So I was, when I was about maybe 10, 10 or 11 years old, um, just a combination of things. I, was, I had a hard life. I had a bad, uh, I had a bad family. Um, I was a loner. I was really an outcast um, just, just because all my brothers and sisters were halves with me. Um, everybody, all my friends had a dad. I didn't have a dad. Um, I didn't have parents. You know, my mom was, was working all the time, so she wasn't with me. And then I was, I was, because of that, I was an awkward, insecure kid. And awkward, insecure kids don't do well among other kids, so I became more of a loner. And then just our life was hard. We had drugs in our home, and, 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 uh, and, and it was, there was just bad things that happened in our house. And I, I had all that stuff, and so a lot of circumstances that made me uh, to do that. And then the world was that time. Uh, uh, I started listening to all the miserable stuff like the kids listen to nowadays. Um, and I was, uh, the world was going to end you know, I talked about this the other week, how that it was acid rain uh, at that time. The environmental disaster was was that time and, and all that stuff. And and uh, they were talking about this this fault in California is going to make California fall into the ocean. And, you know, as I said, I didn't know that was a good thing yet. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, but uh, I'm joking. So don't look at me. And, uh, and the world, you know, all the crime and the bad things, you start learning that when you get a little older, you start realizing there's some bad things happening in this world. It's not all playgrounds. And, uh, and, and you learn that. And I, st- I, got, and I started getting uh, depressed as a kid. And, <clears throat> and uh, I thought, you know, life was horrible. And a couple of adults, I, I, was, I don't know why I was smart. Maybe God just came down and said, hey, you dumb kid, go do this. But I talked to some, some adults who had the good heads, you know, good heads and and on their shoulders, and they, they kind of told me, you know, hey, da 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 da, and <clears throat> and just so you young people know, there's always people trying to freak you out, and the, they they've said that we're gonna die, the world's gonna end in ten years. They've been doing this since about the 1950s, okay? They're, they're gonna keep on doing it. They've been doing it for a long time, okay? Um, the world, we know how the world ends. The Bible tells us how the world ends, okay? And it does end with global warming, okay? It's just really warm. <laughs> Okay, it's, it's, it's so warm, the elements melt with fervent heat. Okay, and there's a new heaven and new earth, and there's no more curse and no more death and sorrow. Okay, and so <clears throat> that's how it's going to end. Okay, we know it's going to end. But um, look, I, 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 st- I, I kind of came out of it, and then I got some good friends, and circumstances changed in my life, and, and I got a little happier, and, and I talked to some smart people, and I came out of it as a kid, and then uh, I got saved at 16, and I just found the meaning of life. I found, man, I was, 
I was in heaven, man. I was 16, 17, 18, 19 years old. I was, I was having a blast. I loved it. I was having so much fun serving God. I was having victory. I was learning. I was teaching. I was, God was using me. I was, I, was, I was having a great time. I found Christ, found the purpose of life, found meaning, found everything in Him, uh, found fullness of joy. I, I, I didn't want the world sin anymore. I was just having a blast. <clears throat> and then somewhere along the way in college, I, 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 just, uh, <clears throat> I just went into depression. And uh, it was dark. And I can handle a lot, and it was bad. And uh, I'd had a hard life, you know. And uh, it went, it went dark. And God just kind of went silent on me. And my whole life was, I already knew the world is a waste of time. I already knew that. And I knew Christ was everything and the purpose of life. And that's all I wanted. It, everything made sense. The Bible made sense. God made sense. Eternity was great. Life was great on earth. I was looking forward to life on earth. I was looking forward to my ministry. I was looking forward to uh, eternity. And, and then suddenly, just God just went quiet on me. And he quit blessing me. And he'd always bless me. Everything I did just was blessed and went well and good. And, and, and everything went great. And all of a sudden, everything went wrong. And usually I prayed and God answered. And, you know, God's like that with me right now. And we have, you know... I don't have to wonder if there's a God. It's, it's, it's so real and powerful. But God, as the Bible says sometimes, he hid his face from me. It says in Chronicles, it says, God left him to try him to see all that was in his heart. It says, and sometimes, we'll, again next week, why standest thou afar off, O God? Why don't you help me in times of trouble? And God just said, I'm, I'm, I'm gone for a while. Let's just see if you'll keep on going. Now, I didn't know that. I just knew God said, I'm not here. And it seemed to me like the Bible didn't work anymore. And that is real trouble for me because that was my whole, that was everything, my, was the Bible. And, it's, and I was in, in Bible college, and all of a sudden, I couldn't pay my bills. The first time in my life, I had health issues. I've been healthy as a horse forever. I started, and, circ, and God just didn't seem to be helping. <clears throat> um, and I went into uh, marriage. With that, um, I got laid off right before I got married. Everything went wrong. All the, I mean, everything went wrong. I was just about to get married two weeks before I get laid off. Um, I was, uh, I was struggling. I was, and I was making serious decisions because, to me, it was. It wasn't like okay, let's go back in the world. To me, I already knew I'd lived a real Christian life and said, "This is so superior. This is, this is it." And the world, to me, still. It's like, I know it's got some shiny things in there, but <laughs> what a waste of time. And that depressed me more because there was nowhere to go. But I remember one day I was, I was and, I, and again, <clears throat> I've always been very emotionally, mentally, physically, all very strong. I was getting physically weak. And, and again, Never happens to me. Ever, ever since a kid, I just super strong physically, never get sick, never get exhausted. I'm always have energy. And I was so tired, I fell against a tree. I just, I was just done. And I remember at that moment, I just decided I'm going to serve God anyway. There's nothing better to do. That was basically what it was. I wrote down 10 reasons, but what it came down to is there's nothing better. And I might be right about God. And if I'm right, I better keep serving him. And I decided to keep serving him. Not long after that, I went to a class, a summer school class, small class, <clears throat> I think nine students. And I don't know what the teacher was teaching on. It was, I don't know what the class was on. I remember the room it was in. And all of a sudden, in that class, just the Holy Spirit just came into that room. And uh, I was just like, whoa. And <clears throat> it was all for me. The teacher just... He just changed subjects, and he talked about darkness he had gone into. And he just kept talking about the darkness. And he talked about, he talked to a pastor about it, about the pastor of the church. And he said, have you ever thought this and wondered this? And he kind of couldn't even verbalize the things he had thought. And the guy said, oh, yeah, you're going through the darkness. And, 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 and he started talking about it. And, he, and, and all of a sudden, I just saw a, a pinpoint of light. That's all I saw. I just said, 
You mean this guy went through this too? I thought I was the only one. Later, I was to find out, <clears throat> I was to find out that um, people who God really want to use have to go into really deep darkness. I don't know why. It's just biblical, okay? They have to be where they're totally at the end of themselves. And, and I found that consistently in counseling pastors. Most of them never go through that, that deep as I went through it, as this guy went through it, as the pastor had gone through. But I came home. <clears throat> I told my wife. I said, she didn't, because I didn't tell her <laughs> how depressed I was. Uh, and I'm, I know you should tell her that. I know. Okay, I'm not good at that. And, uh, and, and I told her, we had a class today, and I couldn't explain what happened. But God just said, You're, you passed. You're going to make it through this. We'll come out of it. And I saw light. And I said, okay, I'm going to make it. And not long after that, I came out of that darkness. It was like I, I had a 200-pound backpack, and all of a sudden I dropped it. <laughs> okay, and I've been off of that without that backpack for a long time. And every once in a while... I, I dip in and go, oh, man, I'm doing not doing well. But to me, those down times are just like, eh, I'm depressed, big deal. I'll be fine. But, I had to, but when I was in that, I had lost all hope. I thought, God's never going to use me. I'm failing my classes. I'm never going to get out of college. And it, I, if, if I logic to you what was wrong, you'd say, that doesn't make sense. And it's not that bad, but in my darkness, it was hopeless. I had no hope that everything would ever be good again. And, 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 but I had visions before that of me doing all the great things we've been able to do and more. I saw visions that are unfulfilled yet from God. All those things were way forgotten. Okay? All that was, was gone, and, and I just had to go through it. And, but the hope was gone, but then God, before it was done, gave me hope. He just gave me hope. Let me just show you, you can have some hope in depression. Uh, let's go to 2 Corinthians 4. Let me hit you, just a couple verses. Yeah, we got time, good. We doing okay? Yes. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. I have a pastor who's going through this right now, who's been talking to me about it and uh, <clears throat> trying to get him through it. It doesn't make any sense, but he has no hope. And uh, just, just working through it. Because most of the Christian life is joyful, victorious, peaceful, but depression comes to people in the Bible. It's part of the deal. And it's where you got to learn to trust God. Second Corinthians chapter 4 and uh, verse 8, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed or confused. We have no idea what's going to happen, but not in despair. You can have a, 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 a spectrum of emotions. Verse 16, for which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Uh, let me go back to Romans in chapter 8. <clears throat> Romans chapter 8 and verse 28. I mean, know all things work together for good to them who love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. It all works together for good. Verse 36, though. As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Terrible circumstances. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Bad things can happen, but you can still have hope. You might go into a moment of no hope. That's okay. Don't live there very long. You're going to lose your strength. And you've got to believe that God will bless your efforts and he'll help you. Jesus said, in this world, you'll have sorrow, you'll have tribulation. But he said, be of good cheer. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. I can go into depression in a sad moment. I can lose someone I love and go and say, man, I'm going to miss them. My heart's broken. I'll never get over this. And then say, but I'll see them again. But when I say I'll see them again, doesn't mean that the depression of losing someone I love deeply is gone. And when you get strong and you're able to have a sober mind, you can say, 
I'm in depression right now. It doesn't make sense, but I can't see any hope. But I know I'm going to come out of this. But you got to go through it a couple times maybe to do that. And you got to realize that God is always good, and you can trust him. And then he'll work it together for good. And you realize you don't have to have no hope. But the devil wants you to believe it'll always be like this. <clears throat> and you will never have happiness again. And, and, you, and, and it's all a matter of that battle over hope. In, in Psalm 73, Asaph went into that deep depression and it was almost done. And he thought, I'm wasting my time. But then, well, let's go back there. We'll look at it again. Psalm 73. But he came out of it. And how he came out of it was fascinating. And you can come out of it in a secular way, the ones that aren't spiritual. The spiritual depression, you don't need God. Um, but, the, but the secular, some people go into depression and come out of it. So then the circumstances change. They get a good friend. They find love. They, things that can maybe help you sometimes if it's not chemical or if it's not spiritual, okay? If it's circumstantial and you can come out of it. <clears throat> and sometimes time heals. But then in Psalm 73, he says, I was almost done. It was too painful for me, verse 16, 17, until I went into the sanctuary of God, then understood I their end. And he talks about the unsaved are in slippery places. They're blessed now, but they're hopeless in the future. And then verse 23, nevertheless, I am continually with thee. Thou hast hold me by thy right hand. You know, I'm with God forever, and he holds me with his right hand even through these low times. From then on, once he got that, he could have hope in any trial. Do you notice there, because I'm going to get to it later, but, but look at verse <clears throat> uh, 17. What happened that changed him? He went to church. <laughs> I'll get to that in a little while, okay? Uh, I'll get to that. And, uh, but, but that's what happened. He got clarity when he went to church. And you'll be, when you're depressed, are you ready? The last place you're going to want to go is church. You're going to go into this battle, and you would rather go and go scuba diving in the sewer <laughs> than go to church at that time. You don't want to be around people because when you're depressed, you want to isolate. And, 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 and you will be amazed. You used to love church. You will be amazed. You'll be like, the coffee's terrible. The donuts are bad. Everybody hates me. I don't like the lighting. It'll just get weird. <laughs> Why? Because <clears throat> the devil's trying to keep you out of church. You'll hate my guts, and then you know you're going crazy. And, and, uh, it's just the way it'll go, because he knows there's something there to help you. We'll get to that, we'll get to that in a minute here. Next, and this is a hard one. This is, okay, so now that I've told you I've been depressed, I've shared with you. When I sound mean, understand I'm not the guy saying, just be happy, you dummy. I'm not that guy, okay? I get it. But now I'm going to tell you the hard things, because the world is not... The world is going to tell you to get on heavy medication, quit your job, stay at home, and do nothing, and curl up into a ball. And that is a guarantee for depression for the rest of your life. You will not get better at home watching daytime TV. Jerry Springer is not good for the mind. Okay? It is not good for you. And the Bible says that, You've got to go and step up and overcome depression. Why art thou disquieted, O oh my soul? Why art thou, why art thou, uh, uh, why art thou disquieted to me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him who is a health of my countenance. I am not going to live this way and do this thing. Let's go back there to Psalms again. During that time, my back went out severely. I never had back problems. And my job was doing nothing but lifting. <laughs> and I thought, I, the, my thoughts went nutso. I'm newly married. I can't provide for my family. I can't go to work. 
my back is messed up. I can't really stand up. I got to go to work. I didn't understand anything about unemployment. I didn't understand. I thought I'm just going to. My, my wife is going to have to go back home to her dad because I'm going to starve to death. I'm going to starve her to death. You just, you just sink, and uh, and uh, <clears throat> and and especially when you've been healthy your whole life and never had that, and uh, and 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 you're, you you do that. Psalm Psalm what are we? Psalm forty three. All right. Uh, Psalm uh, 42, I'm sorry, 42, <clears throat> verse 5. Why art thou cast down on my soul? Why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God. Don't give in to this thing. For I shall yet praise him, who is thy health and thy countenance. God, my soul is cast down. Verse 6. Therefore will I remember thee from the land of Jordan, and from the Hermonites, and from Milgar. He says, I'm going to do some things. I'm going to remember God. I'm not going to forget God in this thing. Why art thou cast down? I'm going to do this. I'm going to get back up. I'm not going to give in this. Help me, God. I shall yet praise him. I'm going to do this. You must take steps. Let me take it back to 1 Kings. I'm going to give you some practical things here. They're going to surprise you because they're so earthy, but they're important. Uh, 1 Kings. We find Elijah just went and had a national revival he'd always wanted, and then he got threatened by Jezebel, and he went into depression, and he wanted to die. And uh, it didn't make any sense. First thing he did, isolated himself. He ran in the middle of the wilderness, leaving left his servants there. <clears throat> in verse 4, but he himself went a day's journey in the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree. Before this, he'd left his servant. And, uh, and he requested for himself that he might die and said, It is enough now, O Lord. Take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. Your father has never had a national revival, first of all. Secondly, why do you want to die because you're not better than your father's? The thing didn't make any sense. He just had a national revival. He just had Mount Carmel. All the prophets of Baal were dead. Baal's prophets were dead. His, 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 the idols of Baal were turned down. Rain had just come back to the nation because God lifted his judgment, and he goes into depression. He gets down underneath the juniper tree and says, I might as well die. And God says, I got to save this guy. And so God, what did he do? He sends an angel and says, the angel goes down there. This is so funny to me. What does the angel do? Oh, thou Elijah, let me tell you, the Lord doth love thee and shall hold thy hand. No, he just went and ran for a couple days in the middle, middle of the wilderness. He hadn't eaten. He hadn't slept. He was exhausted. And exhaustion exacerbates it. And what does he do? And... Uh, and uh, verse 5, and he lay down and slept under a juniper tree. And behold, an angel touched him and said to him, Arise and eat. And he looked to behold, and there was cake, uh, bacon, and the coals, and a cruise of oil. He got an angel to cook for him. Pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> at his head, and he did eat and drink and lay down again. And the angel of the Lord t came again the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat. Because thy journey is too great for thee. Okay. So, <clears throat> there's a bunch of physiological things here, okay? He was exhausted. Exhausted magnifies your emotions. And when you're exhausted, you get down. You go way down, too far down. Number two, he wasn't eaten. Your brain needs food. Okay? Uh, the, just a couple of nutrients. First of all, if you're iron deficient, you're going to probably going to depression. Postpartum depression, part of, the, of it is the woman had just lost a ton of blood. Animals eat the placenta. Okay? A lot of times, my wife, when she had our first, he, she had a, a real bad pregnancy, their first child, and she was, she had horrible postpartum depression until they gave her a big iron shot. She was like, oh, okay. And she felt, just iron deficiency to do that. We are we have a depression problem. Part of the problem in Seattle is there's a vitamin D deficiency in Seattle because people don't get sun. There is a sun here, just so you know that. And uh, and they don't get suns, so they get depressed. Now it's not all that because the number two city in the American depression is Phoenix. 
Okay, so it's not all that, but it affects it. And I just want to tell you, if you eat Cheetos for breakfast and drink six cups of coffees and then go get, you know, a uh, 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 Taco Bell for lunch, you had too much happy moaning there. That's, this is not working. <clears throat> and then for dinner, you know, you go out and order pizza. And you do that 10 days in a row, you're going to find your emotions not very stable. Your body is messed up. It's, there is a physical thing. He said, hey, get up and eat. Then sleep again. And sleep matters too. Because when you're depressed, when you're, when, you're, when, you're, when, you're, when you're anxious, okay, anxiety and depression are different. When you're anxious, you can't sleep well. And you're exhausted. When you're exhausted, you get more and more depressed. And you need to take care of yourself. Vitamin B will help you. B12, okay? Especially with all the vit- B vitamins can help you with your emotions and, and, and help you with these things. People who are, un- they, they don't eat a lot of times. A lot of times people who are depressed don't eat at all. And they get sicker. And then they get, you know, weaker. And then they go, one of the worst things, the cycles I've seen over and over is when they get in the system, the system says you have to stop working. And then all, all they have to do is sit around the house all day and they develop back problems because of inactivity. And then they get more depressed because they have back problems. And they gain weight. And they get more depressed because they gain weight because they're just sitting around the house all day. And it's a cycle and they don't get out of it. Okay? Take care of yourself. You've got to take steps. Number two, get up. Curling up in a ball will not only make it worse. He tells him to get up here in this chapter. And he says, arise and go and, and get up. You've got a great journey in front of you. And verse 8, and he arose and did eat and drink and went in his strength of that meat. Okay? It was, it was supernatural food. We get it. Angel food is called. And uh, that's why I ate angel food cake. I love it. And uh, that's why, because it's, it's right there in the book. And, uh, <clears throat> and so... You don't believe I was ever depressed, do you? Everything's funny to me. <clears throat> he got up and went on with life. You know, when I was in depression, you know what I did every day? I went to work. I went to work when I couldn't. I had to have my friends. I said, my back is completely out. If I get something heavy, can you lift it for me? I didn't know I could go on l and or anything like that. I just thought I had to work. And so when I came to something heavy, I'd had, and that's all it was, was lifting. And another guy, he helped me out because he knew my back was out, and he gave me light loads and da-da-da-da-da and forklift loads and things. I was working in a dock. <clears throat> Get up and function. Go to work. Go to church. Read your Bible. I'm not getting anything from it. Read it anyway. Pray. Go help people. I don't want to help anybody. You Get your mind off yourself. Function. Live. Go be with friends. You'll need good people in your life. Get up. Curling up and giving up and just saying to everybody and throwing in our faces, you don't understand. And you sit there with your dark house with all your curtains closed and every light off. And I come in the house and I walk in and I say, what are you doing? I'm depressed. I can't get up. I can't do anything. I start pulling curtains. See, you can't do that. Oh, I can. I do it all the time. First thing I do, open the curtains. Get up, get dressed. You're going outside. You're getting some fresh air. You're going to get some sunlight. Get up. Live. Function. It'll help you. Go do something. And don't throw it in everybody's face. You don't understand. You've never been depressed. Stop. <laughs> We're trying to help you. Number three. Don't get into the I'm the only one mode. 1 Kings 19, verse 10. And the, Lord's, and the Lord asked him, and he said unto God, God asked him, what's wrong? What are you doing here? And he said, I've been very jealous of the Lord of hosts and the children of Israel, have forsaken thy covenant and thrown down thine altars and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left. And they seek my life to take it away. I'm the only one left. Verse 14, he says it again. Even I, I'm the only one left. And God says in verse 18, Yet I have me, left me 7,000 in Israel. All the Nezers did not bow themselves into Baal, 
Nobody understands. Nobody's ever been through what I've been through. Nobody cares. Nobody. And everybody's going, no, I care. How can I help you? You don't care. You don't understand. Uh, Stop. I'll spank you. (laughs) You're not the only one. Well, no one's ever been through what I've been through. There's 8 billion people. Bible says in 1 Corinthians 10, 12, there is no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above the year able, but will with the temptation make a way of escape that be able to bear it. First half of the message, compassion, understanding. Second half, stop. Somebody's got to tell you that you need to get up and go and live and function. And you're not the only one who's ever been depressed, and, and people can help you even if they haven't been depressed. And get some help. And go do something. And quit, quit thinking you're the only one. No one's ever had that happen. And, and yes, you're unique and you're in unique circumstances, just like everybody else. <laughs> Next, accomplish something. Proverbs chapter 13. I'm just giving you some more practical things here, and i got to finish because I'm out of time. Accomplish something. I don't care what it is. Well, I care. There's certain things. Don't, don't kill somebody. But <clears throat> I don't care if you go mow your lawn. I don't care if you go build something. I don't care if you go clean up your neighborhood. I don't care if you get paid for it. Don't get paid for it. Accomplishing something will lift your head out of the water and give you a breath. <sighs> it helps you. Uh, Proverbs uh, 13 and verse 19. The desire accomplished is sweet to the soul. But it is an abomination to fools to depart from evil. Do something. And, and please, don't finish your video game. You've done enough of that. I mean something where you actually accomplish something. And go, and, and, and it doesn't matter. Go, go, go water the flowers. Just do, accomplish something. Finish a project. That thing has been messed up and dirty. It's been broken. Fi- fix it. But I just find when somebody starts accomplishing something, it kind of gets them going. And it doesn't have to be that don't build a wall of China, okay? Just, just do something. And accomplish something you wanted to do for a long time. Go take a class. Okay? Go, go, go clean your car. Some of you, that's the Great Wall of China. But, but, but do something and accomplish something. And then uh, let refreshing people help you. Proverbs 12, 25. Find people who can help you. You're not going to want to do that. I know that. No one will understand, you'll think, and no one will care, and you, they'll just, they'll just, that they, they won't, they won't help you. They'll tell everybody, there's, no, there's good people to help you. Uh, let's see. Um, verse, uh, this is 12.25, and I've got just, I'm out of time. Heaviness in the heart of men maketh it stoop, but a good word maketh it glad. Iron sharpens iron. The Bible says a good friend is like water, it's refreshing, and there's so many Good word things in the Bible. David was this a Saul when Saul went into depression and uh, was miserable and attacked by a demon. David w- could help him. A couple things. I'll finish. With God and your effort, blessings are coming. Every story we just had. Jesus was going to die, yes, but he's going to be raised from the dead. Elijah was depressed and felt alone, but he's about to meet Elisha, his servant, who would take his place and be his mentor and increase his ministry. The blessings are coming. David was depressed, but, in, but he was delivered from Saul and became king and had his mighty men around him and do anything for him. All these people came out of it. And if you will, David kept on going. And Jesus went to the cross. And all these people, Elisha got, Elijah got up and went. And, and, and you, there's, you're going to come out of it. I've come out of it. Can you imagine my life if I would have curled up into a ball? You know how many people would not be saved today? How many churches would not be started? How many people today would not be going to be fed? How many people today would not be in school around the world? Do you know how many things, how many of you would be Happier? <laughs> How many of you, your life would be so much different if I would have just quit and not kept on going? How many, how blessed is my life now? And how, how I have, that was a long time ago, I was 27, 
28 years ago. And since then, I've had a better life than a human earth should have. And refreshing and fun and laughter and joy. And there's heartaches and there's pains because I'm on earth. But I love life. Because good times are coming if you'll keep on going with God's help. And you will really enjoy the blessings in the future more actually after you've been through depression. Let me take you back to Psalms. We'll finish up there. Two verses. Psalm chapter 30. And uh, <clears throat> verse 5. For his anger endureth but a moment. Sometimes you go through times because of God's judgment. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. Good times are coming. If you'll just keep doing what God wants you to do and not quit. Psalm 126. I don't know the solution. If you ask me what's going to happen, I don't know what's going to happen because I didn't know what was going to happen to me. I don't know how God's going to make your morning beautiful, but he's going to if you'll just serve him. Psalm 126, those who've been in depression, how joyful they are afterward when, when God delivers them. Verse 1, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongue was singing. Then said they among the heathen, the Lord hath done great things for them. The Lord hath done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Just the joy. Just the joy. I love the ministry, and I've had hardships to ministry, but I love it. Because I've had the hardships to ministry. Those of you who have been in depression, <clears throat> when you're out of it and life is okay, you're pretty happy. I'm happy everywhere I go, and I go everywhere. And I, I, I can carry a lot of people's heavy burdens. And, and why? Because I've been down low and know how good it can be and know the joy of the Lord and the peace of God. And there's such a spring up when you make it through it, if you make it through it. If you don't curl up in the ball and quit. There's so much blessing when, when, you're, when God turns your captivity that it's well worth it. And so I just want to give you hope in that, that there's hope. God can turn every, anybody's captivity. But you got, it's all a battle of hope. And when the devil's going to say, it doesn't matter how hard you try. doesn't matter. And he, he'll put a scenario in your head, and you'll think in a circle, and no matter what you do, it comes back the same, it ain't going to work. It ain't going to work. Let's try this. It ain't going to work. Let's try this. It ain't going to work. I keep on ending up there. It ain't going to work. I can't even tell you how it's going to work because I can't figure it out half the time. I just know you keep serving God. God will turn your captivity. Yeah. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. And you can be depressed even in America, even in a blessed life. Think and get, get, have some sobriety. Count your blessings. And uh, God can bring you out. Let's pray. Lord, I pray that today you use this message. And I pray that, uh, Lord, your people would, uh, would be able to come out of depression that are in it, that they would be able to help others in it. And I pray that some people who lost all hope, you give them hope today. Lord, we got to get in the spiritual aspect more next week. But, Lord, may they get up and go. And may they uh, do what you want them to do. And, Lord, may they take these steps. We pray for your, your grace and your strength in Jesus' name.